I want to show you how the compound discovery molecular feature extraction algorithm can be useful for identifying features in libraries with MSMS data and how we can gain confidence in what entries were found. So for this I'm loading my default method again just to ensure that all the parameters are reset. I will open my target MSMS data file which I showed you how we can create an inclusion list and add that to acquisition to generate this targeted MSMS data file. Notice when you open this, even in the navigator view, there are regions in the total ion chromatogram where we have TOF MS data, and you can see that specified ESI scan, and then there are regions where MS MS has been performed due to the nature of that target inclusion list. So you can also verify the method if you go to method print acquisition report, and if you print preview, you can see some of the target inclusion features and where certain of the features were added in the chromatogram for this particular method. And if we look at this particular method, we can see that multiple entries have been added. There is retention time specified as well as a delta retention time, an isolation width for the quadrupole, and discrete fixed collision energies were used at 10, 20, and 40 during acquisition. So now we can run through our compound discovery workflow and find by targeted MSMS using the library to assist in identification of some of these features. I'm going to go back to compounds view. Run my compound discovery for targeted MSMS remove the database and add a forensics toxicology database and my forward and reverse scoring I will keep as default. Remember the forward scoring looks for library or spectral information in our unknown sample and compares that to the library. The reverse score looks in our library and compares that to our sample. In this case I'm going to only include the and wait for the library search scores and the overall ID score and you'll see why that's important when we have MSMS data and interpreting the results. And in the find by targeted MSMS you might see new parameters. We will use the Agile 2 algorithm. Some of these chromatographic peak widths come from the targeted list but that's dependent on your peak widths. And for the compound total ion chromatogram peak filters, I will keep the default values. For the peak spectrum extraction, I will not do any MSMS background subtraction, but this can benefit and it's worthwhile playing around with this parameter where you can average some of the spectra at the beginning and the end of the peak, which is subtracted and it might clean up some of the library spectra. I will rerun my workflow and in this case I'd like to verify the behavior of the program by going to my peak at 8.3 minutes where I know I have diazepam standard. In this case I can see there's a result and again we will add all the columns and remove any columns in our compound list. So here I can see that there's the MSMS count, the count is the number of combined MSMS spectra associated with this compound. So we can see that we've actually obtained spectra at 10 as well as different collision energies and in a moment I'll show you how to bring that up. We can see that there are now different scores. We've got the score as well as a library score which means how well the MSMS data has been matched to a library and some additional information like the database PPM mass error. So bringing up the result we can see that again from our database three isobaric species and one isomer was identified and in this case diazepam is ranked and listed as the, the one with the best score and 
we can look at the reason why. You can see the mazindol has also scored, but the um, methquelone, chloromethquelone, didn't have any scores associated. So if we expand this um, tab, then we can see that the forward scores for diazepam at different collision energies were specified. If we click on each one of these, we can also see the spectral difference plot result, which is essentially the sample versus the library entry in a mirror style plot. I will show you how to toggle that as well in the different results. You can toggle that view if it's not being displayed. So if we look at the different results, just by double clicking, we can then zoom in. And if you look at the high energy 40 electron volt spectra, we can see we have fragment ions for diazepam, and these correlate well with the intensities of the library entry. If we look at some of the other results, like Mazindol, we can also look at whether some of these ions have been flagged. We do have to click that best icon. And now we can look at Mazindol and we can try and compare just some of the spectra. You can see we don't have a very good library spectrum for Mazindol and some of these are not good matching, hence why our forward scoring is potentially not as good. Our reverse scoring has not been computed there, you can see, because the reverse scoring is when the library, this library entry is compared to the data file and it didn't have a good match, therefore. So that's how we can gain confidence on identifying molecules based on their MSMS in the compound discovery workflows. We can look at another entry, the trazodone, which is also part of a cluster of uh, isomeric compounds, which have the same mass, but not the same formula necessarily. And again, in this case, we can gain more confidence and see the trazodone was identified with the library score returning 95.15 out of these hits, giving us confidence that these other two molecules can be eliminated. We can again look at our difference plots and see that some of the fragment ions correlate to that of the library entry. I want to show you how the molecular feature extraction changes when we have an auto MSMS data file. Now remember when we're doing auto MSMS, this is when we've either specified an inclusion list using TOF MS data or we've just set a threshold for when precursors are selected for fragmentation. So we can very similarly run through a compound discovery workflow. This time we change to the auto MSMS mining algorithm. In, in this case, we're also waiting for the library searching in the overall score rather than the database search, which also encompasses a formula search. And in compound discovery, we can now look at some of the find by auto MSMS parameters, in this case some, uh, some retention time windows and similar TIC thresholds can be set. Um, for some of the other features, we can exclude certain masses as well, like if MSMS has been done on the 1 to 1 or 9 to 2 calibrants in positive mode or uh, the negative mode equivalents, then we can also exclude these. So running through the workflow for auto MSMS, we can verify the results from there. So 112 unknowns of which 20 of them were identified. Contrast that to the targeted methods where we only have a target list of compounds we were interested in. So you can see you can do a little bit more screening using auto MSMS. We can verify some of these results again if we go to our peak at 8.3 minutes, we can see diazepam was correctly identified in our auto MSMS data file with very similar results to what we saw for targeted MSMS. And additional molecules have been identified from the MFE algorithm, which 
you can then do additional formula formula prediction if you do identify by formula generation and so you can generate formulas for these and then potentially go to the molecular structure correlator once you've got this MSMS information to try and find potential compounds so we would export this list as a chef file imported into molecular structure correlator and see the video on MSC where you can then import chef files and do database searching either with PCDLs or with the ChemSpider or PubChem type libraries and try and import mole files of the structures to help identify and rank the fragments. So you can do unknowns elucidation from this auto MSMS data file as well.